Yo, what's going on guys? My name is Javelric and today I'm bringing you my temple tracking guide for you to be able to complete the elite Mortania diaries or any diaries if you really want to. But yet again, just like my Dominion Tower guide, I'll mainly be focusing on the elite requirement. And of course, in turn, I guess the completionist requirement part of it, because that is the main reason why people do these diaries because let's be honest the rewards are not that great i'll be going over the requirements giving you guys an overview the inventory and obviously gear setup and lastly i'll be going through each event i've no idea how long this video will be in length but probably if it's a bit longer that's the whole reason because i'm going to show you each event or encounter or whatever you want to call it during this mini game and how to be able to beat it so if you're going to enjoy the video definitely go give it a like let me know in the comment section down below what other guys you would like to see subscribe if you're new and let's just get into it. So for good measure, I'm going to give you guys the hard requirements and kind of my own requirements. Just as like the Dominion Tower, I have some requirements that I would highly, highly recommend, but are obviously not hard requirements to be able to do the mini game. However, the two hard requirements are though, in aid of the mirror cube, because that actually unlocks temple tracking from Pathodormus to Berg the Rot. And to unlock the other route back from Berg the Rot to Pathodormus, you need to complete Darkness of Hallow Veil. However, I also highly, highly recommend you completing the River of Blood quest as well. This will unlock the Sun Spear, which you can transform into a magic, range, and melee weapon, and it can damage vampires. During some of the events, you'll be encountering vampires, so the Sun Spear will literally be your best in slot and will be going with magic, so that's kind of the only option. But if you're wanting to do this without the Sun Spear, you're, you don't want to do River of Blood or whatever reason, you're just doing it for other requirements, an Inventus Flail will work as well, obviously on the vampires. It's, it's just a switch, and the Sun Spear literally makes is afk with the next requirement just like the dominion tower animate that blood barrage and of course magic tank armor this mini game will pretty much require you to just tank hits for the entirety you barely be doing any damage anyway so being able to tank things with animate that and to heal yourself again with blood barrage is very very useful and very very good so highly highly recommend using a strategy to make it literally brain dead including using the sun spear definitely recommend and lastly the druidic pouch which you'll be needing for the guest events to be able to actually take them on let me actually give you guys a little bit of an overview for the general strategy because it applies to all the events like pretty much Temple tracking is quite simple. You will be getting an NPC from one side to the other and you'll be going through the swamp. The elite requirement is getting all these NPCs that you need to get from Berg the Rot to Patadormus or Patadormus to Berg the Rot. They are different which side you're going to, to level 99. The main way you'll be doing this is just doing the heart temple track. So you have three options, easy, medium and heart and just the heart ones are the ones you want to be doing because they give you the best experience for your npc as i said later on the video i'll be showing you each event individually with timestamps and like their name so if you're just interested in that skip ahead but pretty much those npcs that you'll be going to carry through these swamps have different levels easy medium and hard the easy and medium ones are very simple to do you pretty much just encounter one of these events that has mobs so for example the giant snakes or the ghast event and you will just literally be tanking until your npc takes them all on because they are maging and they can just do the damage for you and as long as the npcs are targeted on you they will not be attacking your npcs however the hard npcs are absolute noobs that's why they're hard and difficult with those npcs you just need to run through the events yourself so you need to clear all the mobs and you need to do everything but that's not too difficult there are only two out of the six that you actually have to properly do the mini game so to say and the other two are really quick so my recommendation would be start with the hard ones then do the medium and easy ones and it will be an absolute breeze and as i kind of already alluded with the main strategy it is literally pop anime dead blood brush if you really need to you don't really need to because they barely do any damage at all on you when you're using magic tank armor and just wait literally just wait till the NPCs have taken out all the NPCs or the mobs that are in the area and then move on to the next event. There are some non-combat events that you just have to do, as I said. I'll be showing you everything later on, but it is very simple. It is very AFK and there's nothing really much to it. And also go back and forth. So, for example, if you're doing the hard 
NPC, get the hard NPC from Pet the Dormus to Burke the Rod, and then choose the hard NPC from Burke the Rod to Pet the Dormus. You'll pretty much get them to level 99 around the same time. You might have to do one or two extra runs with one or the other sides because it just really depends on the RNG you get on the events and which events will give you the most experience, etc. etc. But overall, that is the general strategy. Tank the mobs for the NPC, the NPC attacks, unless it's the hard ones, then you will actually be doing the events and just be rushing through them as quickly as possible. So let's get into the inventory and the gear setup. The inventory setup is really, really simple. Bring an overload for boost and obviously extra defense. Bring a rune pouch with blood, death, fire, and soul runes and have earth runes in your inventory or whatever combination you want to do. Just have four in your grasping rune pouch if you have one. And then bring your Druidic Pouch as well to be able to take on the gas and to be able to damage them. If you are a main, just buy a hundred Mauritania Fungus. And obviously if you're an Iron Man, you kind of have to collect them yourself. And the rest, you want to have 20 Sharks in your inventory. Not for you to munch, but there is a event later on where you'll be needing to heal NPCs by using Sharks or any food on them. I would recommend bringing 20 of them because you will also be getting reward tokens throughout. Just see whatever is most expensive when it comes to reward tokens to use them on. And if not, I just use them on experience books. And when it comes to gear, it is quite simple as well. Bring your best in slot tank armor when it comes to magic, whether it's again a Dormic, Sea Singers, or Crypt Bloom. Bring a Sun Spear, and the rest really doesn't matter at all because, quite frankly, you will just be chilling there, tanking. You can bring some prayer, I don't think it is really needed. You can bring obviously some restores if you really want to when you're using prayer, but I was doing it with Crypt Bloom. Obviously, that's the best in slot and animate that. And I was literally just chilling there. And if I really needed health, I would literally cast one blood barrage and I would be full health again. And we could do it all over again. So let's just get into all the events individually with some live commentary on how to exactly do them. When it comes to these combat events, make sure that you are attacked by the minions and that your npc can just attack it this strategy pretty much applies to the giant snail the nail beast and the snakes as well you can just pj them off by just tagging them and your npc will no longer be hit and they can just take out the npcs as i said same strategy applies to the giant snails nail beast and snakes i would recommend not having an action bar because otherwise you will be doing too much damage but yeah, that's pretty much all that there is to it. Also, a side note, if for some odd reason you're having struggle tanking these snails, make sure to use a snelm, but I don't see why you should have an issue. But important to mention, I guess. Here we have the skeleton event. This one is quite interesting. You can pretty much destroy all of them by clicking on unleash on the tomb, but you need to like kind of gather them all around. What I like to do is just run around and attack them all your minion can't really do anything here so the best way is just to get it over and done with as soon as possible as soon as all the skeletons are tacked you just stand here at the tomb click it and they're all gone well almost all gone because sometimes they're just standing too far away like there but yeah you just clear out the last of them and that is this event done as well and you can move on here we have a juvenile event unfortunately your npc will not be able to damage either the juveniles or the fire watches so the best thing is clear it as quickly as possible and then move on to the next event here is the shade event i think this is probably the worst one because sure you can have your npc take on the shades However, just I found that the quickest way to just deal with this event is just take them out and then just move on because they're so spread out and sure they're stacked right now, but they're usually like all the way spread out across this entire little area, which obviously resembles Morton, I think it is. Yes. Take them out, move on. That's it. Here we have the guest event and as you can see, I'm just standing here whilst my minion attacks it. And that is pretty much it. Just wait till your minion takes out the ghast and that's it. There's nothing much to it. That's literally all you need to do. Just make sure your animate dead is up, unlike mine. And you should be sorted for this event. And once all the ghasts are cleared, move on to your next event. So this last event is a bit of an awkward one. I did temple trekking for more than an hour and I just couldn't get it to show up. Trust me, it is in there. I have encountered it whilst going for this requirement. However, it's a Kraken event. You pretty much just want to attack the tentacles that you see on screen. And then that's it. 
that is the entire event. There's nothing much more to it. When it comes to the puzzle, this one is probably, <laughs> oddly enough, my favorite. You jump over the bridge and you right click water power on the nature spirit. What you want to do is click on all the fires around the nature spirit until they're all cleared to be able to complete this event. And it is quite nice if you're on a low ping world somehow and you can do it like really quick and it's like really satisfying because the way it registers is just really, really nice. But I missed one right there. But yeah, you get the gist of it, just clear it, and once you have cleared them all, you can jump back over the bridge and continue your track over here. Next up, here we have the heal puzzle. Pretty much what you want to do is, this is what you bring your sharks for. You use your sharks on all the NPCs that you see around here that are saying very sick. There are five in total, all scattered here, as you can see just on screen right now. Once you've healed them all, you can click here, continue track, and you can move on with Temple Track. Also, a quick side note for if you happen to do the feeding event and you do not have any food on you. I mean, just bank before it, right? Just make sure you always have five on you at all times. But you can kill these snails to be able to gather some food and then cook it on the campfire right there. Just thought I'd add that actually in, in case you forgot to bank, but just bank. Okay, here we have the swing event, I guess you can call it. What you want to do is you want to come up to this swamp tree, trim it three times, click on the vines in your inventory, use the long vine on the swamp tr tree. So you will pretty much just create a rope swing right here and then find the click box for the rope swing right here. Swing on it, move to the other side and you are Gucci. Also, there's this Aber crank event. You could just continue track. It's a bit of a strange one. It's like a free continuation or something i don't know why it's there bit of a strange one but hey on. i think right here we have one of the most infamous events in runescape if you ever watch swampletics you know about the bog and the bog is nothing to play with go up to this spiny bush to the right here to get yourself a branch i already got myself some branches what you want to do is pretty much you want to start from left to right use your branch on it look at your chat box and it says it looks quite soft. As soon as you get the pop-up, the ground seems quite firm. Your character will stand on it and you repeat until you are at the other side. Yes, this is the entire event. Just you need to find a path. I always like to go straight and then if not, yeah, just go from there. I actually, when I did it, I didn't know you could do this branch tactic. Uh, that would have really helped. I just walked, failed, walked, failed. But yes, that is the bog done. Pretty much make it to the other side. That's it. And are we going to do it in one line? This clip will be hella long. I don't care. Will we do it in one line? Are we going to get the Path of Gods? No. Bad. And there we made it to the other side. And that is the bulk done. So when it comes to the bridge event, it is quite simple. You want to be gathering some logs by just woodcutting the trees. And sometimes they fall on the ground as well. Because your minion actually helps you collect these logs. So when you have three logs, you click on Fix Broken Bridge. And once you've done that three times, you can cross the bridge and this event has been completed. You just go here and you click continue track. I really hope that you guys did enjoy this video and found it very helpful for you to be able to finish temple tracking. If you did, make sure to leave a like on it. Let me know in the comment section down below what other guides you want to see for completionists and just in general, maybe some diary things that are more expensive, like how I had my Dominion Tower guide. I am definitely going to be doing one on the Mage Training Arena. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely subscribe, like, comment, and I'll see you guys in my next video.